Hey guys, myself Rakesh and I welcome you back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how do you search events in Google Calendar. In UiPath, how can you search an event in Google Calendar? So let's see how this can be done. Before that, please do subscribe to my channel and I do request you to subscribe and give it a like to the content that you are watching on my channel. Let's get started. So the very first thing what we will do on the calendar we are going to create an event okay let me create a simple event okay and i'm going to name it as let's say test and let it be for one hour okay and now i'm going to add few guests okay so um, use something right at the a at the rate eight dot com there is no such address but i'm simply adding okay just to just to test it so how many people are there one is my own self and the other person i've invited there are two attendees in the meeting okay so I'm going to hit on save and I'm going to say don't send because I don't want to send that invite to someone with a at the rate a.com I don't know okay so now the event has been created can I search this event on UiPath on the Google Calendar the event which is there can I search it so let's see how this can be done on UiPath okay for that if you are very new if you are very new to the channel how do you set up this G Suite application scope API setup? Please look for API setup video on my channel and how do you enter your client ID, client secret and all that I have taught it which is a lengthier topic. So please do watch and that after only you set this up you should watch this video because without this it's not going to work. So G Suite application scope I had set it up. Now here I, I am going to search an event within the calendar. So for that, what, there should be an activity, right? Within UiPath, there is supposed to be an activity. So what is that activity? Let's see. So first of all, go to Available, go to Integrations, and then go to Google Workspace. And here, for within the calendar, you have something called Search Event. So drag and drop that. Drag and drop the Search Event. Now let's look at some of its properties of this activity search event so one is continue on uh, error that means if error comes it should continue to the next activity calendar id if you do not provide the calendar id it is anyways going to work on your primary calendar so right now my i am already logged into my primary calendar so because we have done the um, um, if you go back here the g suite application scope i have created the oauth for my primary calendar so it will automatically take it so you don't have to necessarily provide the calendar id if you have to walk walk on some other calendar and you have got auth authentication to work on the other person's calendar then his calendar id can be entered okay all right so um, end date end date means if you highlight on any of this uh, pointer it's, it's anyways going to explain you if specified the activity will search for events before the date so if you are specifying 28th July, so before that if there was any event called so and so. So how this one works we need to understand. Okay, There are similar properties like this. But again how practically it, it is going to work. All you have to do here you need to provide the name of the event. Let's say I want to find if the test event is there in the calendar or not. So simply you have to provide the name of the event. Now if you go to the property panel, search query. So this search query if you highlight you will get a complete detail if specified events whose title location description or attendee list fields contain the provided free text query are returned so if any event where the description or the title or the attendee wherever this matches if the you know whatever that matches it is going to fetch that and show it to you right so here if i am saying test right so here in my calendar I have one event called test so let's see how it is generally working then we can get into a complicated situation so I have entered test here so once it is entered the output would come in a event array variable so for this let me create a variable called events okay so any name you can give so I have created a variable called events now if you look at this variable this is an array of event I mean there could be possible if you are writing test there could be multiple such uh, calendar events in your calendar which has test 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 right possible so it could be array of results okay and then from that you can choose which one you you really wanted to really work on 
so first of all let's see how this one is working so here we have defined the output output variable now how do you how do you access the output variable is important so what i'm going to do i will use a message box first just to see how this one is working okay so i got the message box so once i have the message box because this all this are inside the event events variable okay let me show you the variable this is not the variable let me delete that so events variable it's an array of events so here in the events because it's an array if i have to see how many different how many meetings are there in my calendar which whose name contains test so let's say i am going to say count events dot count so it's, it's just think it's an array how do you treat a array variable the same logic would work here so i'm saying events dot count if i do this let me quickly run this so it should only return me saying one there is one event whose name contains test got it so what would happen if i'm going to create one more event with the same name let's say i'm going to create one more event let's say this time i'm going to say test one similar name so now if i run it let's see what is the output coming this time so likewise you can do multiple different experiments to get deeper into a subject and learn many things out of that okay so now what is saying the test word is there in two different events one is the test one and the test getting it so it is checking the word if it contains not exactly matches but contains okay if you look at the property of this one search query it tells you specified event whose title location description or attendee list fields contain the provided free text contains okay that word is important all right so i got this um, now uh, what if i would like to know how many number of attendees are there okay for example um, let me delete this okay let me delete this event let's focus on this one here how many attendees i have got i have got two attendees hmm? so how do i find that how many attendees are there inside a event so for that all i have to do event okay event is array because here i will say zero just to access the first item of that and then i'm going to say dot dot and here i would like to know attendees okay attendees and then dot let me see what are the properties are available and accordingly we will try to see what can be done uh, so there is something called count okay so this this can help me to get the count of attendees so if i run this so there are two attendees so it should give me the output as two you can use a for each loop loop through how you treat an array and a list similar things see it is saying there are two attendees okay so i'm i'm stopping the video here but again you can still continue to do little bit more experiment okay one more important thing okay event id how do you get the event id after you search an event okay so how do you get the event id um so here i would say uh, events is the variable dot uh, if you put a dot now check the properties that you have so one of the property should be id let's see N not like this events because array right i have to say zero that means the first item dot and then i should have something called id okay so this is going to return the event id of this calendar uh, of that meeting okay this meeting what is the event id so event id is very very important so how do you fetch the event id from the calendar event from the google calendar event so if i run this now this is important okay we'll be using in the next automation so please do see this um so now for this test one is going to show me the event id is it see this is the event id of this test event getting it so this is how you will be able to um you know um get into one event okay so how to use this event id i'm going to talk in the next video so thank you guys for watching 
and i'm going to meet once again in your next content so please do stay tuned and do subscribe to the channel do not forget we all have to stay connected and we have to continue continuously learn so please do subscribe to the channel do not forget thank you guys let's meet in our next content bye bye